Hey everyone, I'm going to make a quick how-to video. Uh, I hope, I don't know for sure how quick it is. I'm not going to leave it running because you don't need to see the struggling of a middle-aged lady trying to get a valve loose. But what I am going to do is tell you everything I'm going to do to it. And then I'm going to come back and video after I get it done. So, um, I only own the house about three years. The water heater is brand new. Uh, that was one of the contingencies of me buying the house was that they put a brand new water heater in and unfortunately the water here has a lot of sediment in it and there was a couple things that I should have done that I didn't know and I haven't done and now unfortunately even though this water heater is only three years old the pressure relief valve is leaking uh, came down here to get something out of the utility closet and there was a leak the pan down here was wet and it was leaking so I tried a couple of quick fixes and neither one worked so I'm gonna go ahead and replace it but one thing I would like to mention is something that I while I've been on YouTube University I've seen a couple guys say is that you should you know monthly or just ever so often a few times a year come down here and just hit this valve now right now it's not going to have any water on it but this is like a little manual release valve and you want to just pull it back like that and when you do and it has water in it you'll see it coming out and just release the pressure off of this and what that does is it keeps the internals of the valve working better it probably would have kept some of that sediment out of the valve, which I'll show you once I take it out, what how bad it looks. Anyway, um, this pressure relief valve, this is just a component on your water heater that uh, if your water heater was to get, if your temperature was to get too high and it built up too much pressure, this would pop off and, and pop some water out and relief pressure on your water tank. This is a code now on water heaters. So if your water heater doesn't have one, you may want to find out why and try to get one installed. Now, a couple things they did not do correctly, and this is all stuff that I should have known. I just, like I said, I didn't pay any attention to it because it was brand new, but they did not put a pipe, a drain pipe out of the bottom, which I bought the stuff for, and I'm gonna do that. Add a piece of pipe, that way it comes down further. That way if it does, pop off at any time uh, the water will just shoot straight down to the ground to the pan instead of shooting all over the room so I'm gonna add that and then another thing they didn't do and I should have I should have caught this a long time ago and maybe I did and just forgot because there's so many things I wanted to fix once I bought the place but they did not they ran this wire straight to the water heater right there and they should not have done that uh, this is not to code because you cannot see the breaker box from here my breaker box is actually upstairs in the main part of the house therefore if it's not within line of sight you need an emergency way to turn your water off so what I'm gonna do is I've got a couple disconnects and this requires just to hook up a disconnect to it so what I'm going to do is um, while I've got while I'm doing the work on this I'm going to take the wire loose out of here I'm going to run it over into a disconnect that I'm going to mount over here somewhere there's quite a bit of wire so instead of mounting it to the block wall I'm just going to bring it over here and mount it to the wooden wall and that way mount a disconnect for this and I may actually go ahead and put a light in here as well because right now I'm just using the lamp. Um, but yeah, that's a couple things that I've got to do. And then something else I'm going to do right there. You can see this is the uh, cold water supply. So I'm going to cut this loose right here and I'm going to add a filter. And I am going to have to mount it onto this concrete wall so I'm going to, I'll mount a board here 
and then I'll mount my filter onto that and then that way the water running into the water heater right here coming in coming down here coming along and running into the water heater right here will be filtered so this will hopefully never happen again with this TMP valve this TMP valve should last if it's maintained properly it should last at least 10 to 12 years if not the lifetime of the water heater so I just wanted to give you all a brief intro of what I'm going to be doing here on these repairs and when I get them finished I'll come back and I'll show you the outcome take care this may or may not work but uh, right there you can see that element or diode sticks down in the water heater it's the big long shaft when that's on the cold side that's the water coming in and that is how corroded it is see how you can see something that looks all sorry but this is about the best I can do but see that it's got like stuff sticking out on the side of it that's how bad this water heater is after three years of non-filtered on city water that's inside of there it's really hard for me to show you but this is city water this is not well water so for nothing else that should show you what if you're drinking this or you're putting this on your body and not treating it and not filtering it that's the kind of water that's coming into our system and this is city water now I use a small pure well filter system for drinking and then um, we've got a filtered shower head um, but I'd like to do a whole house filter system but my shut off is way over there that's where my main water comes in and as bad as the water is here I don't want to have to climb all the way back in my crawl space once a month and change the filter out or clean it out so I'm gonna just keep filtering water at the sink the way we have been with the pure well uh, metal it's like a Berkey but it's cheaper and then like I say put the filter in here jeez man this is bad all right so at this point I want to show you what a bad valve looks like and like I say this thing is only three years old but here's the valve I'm going to replace it with you can see there's the little trip stem that thing is made out of a plastic to where once it gets to a certain temperature too high uh, 212 degrees boiling it, it will build up too much pressure that plastic will swell up and it will cause it to push in on that and cause that valve to release and let water come out of your water heater and then here's what this one looks like and just look like it won't even move see it's like all caked up crudded up and it won't even I wish I could show you better there we go it, it's just seized up in there it won't I can't get it to pull out or anything I got it to pull a couple times but then it just completely seized and you can see down in there how bad it is so that's how bad our water systems are this is in Kingsport Tennessee um, so I just want to show you what a bad one looks like and I'll get back to you with the finished product alright so it's been a few hours just, just put it that way no that's just me making silly mistakes and having to go back to Home Depot so that's neither here nor there but I got the water back on got it hooked up to code got the valve replaced got a piece of pipe for a discharge pipe going down 
Got the new valve. I'm letting it fill up all the way. So far, so good. I don't know. I'm going to have to check everything for sure. The water down there is still from this morning when I was draining it out. I forgot to say I drained like 12 gallons of water out. Drained it into uh, gallon jugs just to put it back for extra water or whatever. Um, but yeah. Drained it. Replaced the two, uh, replaced the valve, got that took care of. Um, ran the new line for the electric. I got this loop here. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna get another strap and just strap that up. And I'll tell you why I ended up with that long six foot piece of hose here in a second. But there's the disconnect. So now uh, the water heater is wired properly because it's not in view of the panel, of the electrical panel. You have to have a disconnect. So this is like, if you'll, you'll see like outside units and stuff too. Right there, you just get a hold of that. See how it's got the handles right there? You get a hold of that and pull it out if you have an emergency and you need to shut your water off. Pull that out. So I wired it up. I wired the, this is the wire, what would be considered load. There's two wires in here and a ground wire. So three all together. It's 10-2 basically. And this is in non-metallic liquid type. And then this is the original wire coming in, which was just going right straight down here to the water heater, what you'd be considered hardwired but that's a no-no per code now what i was gonna do was when i went to home depot i was gonna get like three feet basically three to four feet of 10-2 cut and just run it like that because everything's so expensive now the wire and everything's so expensive well guess what they didn't have any 10-2 on the rolls for cutting and so the cheapest 10-2 I could have bought was 25 feet for like 50 bucks. So I just went ahead and bought this, what's called an appliance whip, or um, people would know it as an air conditioner whip, but it's just a, a way of, it's already got the all the wire inside this that you need. Just goes up in here, and then over in this end, just goes down in here, and wire nutted together i should have showed you that already but uh, i mean i should have left this open and showed you that but i buckled everything up and i'm just too tired now to fool with it but i got my turn my water back on got the breaker on it's filling up i can hear it making noises so far so good so yeah that's how you replace that valve on your own if you need any help with that shoot me a message Okay, thanks.